What up, Nate? What's up, player? We here, bros. Nice to have you on, man. Appreciate you having me, dude. I've been uh, looking forward to it. Absolutely, bro. It's about time we got you on, bro. It's been fucking been a, been a minute. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, bro. What's up? Not much, bro. Just uh, you know, excited to be over here. Been telling y'all I was gonna do it. Finally got some time, so here we is. Here we are, bro. Fucking, it's a big one too because you uh, your resume is freaking amazing, bro. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I uh, I appreciate that. I don't really look at it like that, but yeah. Yeah. Well, just to let the people know, you've opened up for the Theo Von Adam Ray, right? Yeah. You've opened up for Adam Ray, and I'm sure many other ones, but those are the ones that I recall when yeah. we speak. Yeah, both of those and a couple of other people, and that's, you know, been I've had I've been lucky, blessed or whatever to have good opportunities. Right. And when given the opportunity, do good at it. Exactly, dude. Because that's, you know, this is, you know, the podcast is about, like, giving you advice or like ask you asking questions about comedy and stuff right yeah basically just learning from people that comics i think are funny and i want to learn from them and stuff like that best thing i can tell you is be yourself and like everybody says and like you got to figure out how that is and it might sound cliche but like that's the best advice i've gotten because it's like what does that mean i am being myself but like what part of myself how do i do this how do i do that but when you get the opportunity you know you've been everybody's a lot of these comics a lot of people you know, want the opportunity, mm-hmm. but it's like, have you been, did you earn that opportunity mm. or do you just want that opportunity now? Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Because like for me, I've always been a earn it type of person. So like, even if you know, so maybe you get an opportunity, you don't feel like you earned yet. Mm. Well, what are you going to do? Right. Coach is putting you in the game. You're going to make the player, you're going to fucking let it hit in your hands and drop or what? You're going to run the wrong route. You're going to make a penalty. A lot of uh, variables. Right. So I would just say if and when you get an opportunity to do something like that, make sure you bring your A game and work hard and get there. Absolutely. It's, <clears throat> going back to uh, the opening up for Theo, you, you've you opened up for multiple times, but well, we spoke last time and you said nine months into the game, dude, you got to open up for Theo in Louis- in your hometown, Louisiana, or yeah. home state, Louisiana. Yeah. Um, were you, do you think you were ready for that opportunity, being so new to comedy? Uh, fuck no. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it was an opportunity that was given, and you took. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't. I wouldn't say fuck no. I would say uh, fuck no. But at the same time, like, I had only been doing comedy for nine months. I, you know, I got friends that have been doing comedy for ten years, never got to do nothing like that. But one, you know, circumstances allowed for that to occur, and next thing I know, you know, I've been doing open mics and a couple bar shows and shit for nine months, and now I'm opening for. 2,200 people in a theater in in Lafayette in front of 2,200 people, including, you know, eight of my best friends, my right. mom and my aunt. Yeah. Which not a lot of people can say. You Like what you said, even 10 years in, not a lot of people can say that. Yeah. And it was, you know, lucky to have that opportunity. But what am I going to do? I don't want to go up there and bomb for five minutes. Right. Did I have my best set of my life? Fuck no. But did I have my best set of my life up to that moment? Fuck yeah. Yeah. Yes, I did. And I, I, you know, I couldn't have asked for it to go better. Absolutely. But doing that, I guess the biggest thing I took away from it was anything is possible, you know, because mm-hmm. anything you can do, anything you put your mind to type shit, if you really work hard at it and, you know, big G, the universe, whatever you call it, fucking is feeling that too. Right. Because that's what happened. Yeah, how did <clears throat> how did uh, that experience opening up for Theo nine months in? How did that kind of set you up for the next, you know, for the next few months? Because like I, I say it all the time in this podcast, is that the first? I mean, I don't know what nine months is like yet, but the first six months is rough. I'm six months in, and it's. I was gonna say rough. how long are you in six? Yes, yeah, about just about six months, like six months, like next week or something. Nice, but it's, happy it's, early half of your birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Um, but how did that experience with Theo kind of set you, yourself up to, to like? Di- it obviously gave you some sort of incentive to keep going with it. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, Theo's my favorite comedian, number one. He's also my friend, which is cool as shit. Like, he's my friend now. But uh, that was just cool as shit. And, you know, I, how did that, what, what was the question? Like, how did it lead, like, what did it do for me? Yeah, it I guess made I, me. It made me, bro, it made me realize, like I said, anything's possible. And gave me, uh, what do you call it, validation. Mm-hmm. Because I'm like, okay. I moved across country, came out here to try to do this and that, and now I'm trying to stand up, and it's fun. Am I going to be able to do anything with this? Am I even any good? Who knows? But after doing that, yeah, 
I got I, I got I like my chances if I work hard, right? And keep putting myself out there and doing, you know, working toward what I want to get to. I got to all all the confidence in the world that I can do what I want to do. Right. It doesn't matter whether it's tomorrow or next year or ten years. Right. I think I can do it. It's crazy how you had to move. <clears throat> you had to move to L.A. and then it brought you back to Louisiana, on, yeah. but on a bigger like pedestal. You know what I mean? Or like yeah. just a bigger circumstance. It was my uh, yeah. It's insane. Insane to do that at a hometown. Coolest thing I ever got to do. There you go. Up to, still? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I'm 34, and that was the coolest thing I've ever got to do it, was that day. Yeah. I can imagine, dude, especially like your first one with Theo, dude. That's crazy. Yeah. So wild. And then how was <clears> – <throat> you opened up for him a couple times. When mm -hmm. was the most recent time you opened up for him? Uh, I opened up for him like two months ago at the comedy store. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. How was that different from your first time opening up for him? How was that different from the first time? Well mm – -hmm. Number one, this was <laughs> okay. So that they were different because my first one was in Louisiana. So all my shit is about being a bouncer from Louisiana, living in California. So I say, well, out there we do this, out here y'all do that. Mm. I just flipped that when I went to Louisiana. I was like, down here we do this, out there they do that. Got and you. All my shit was able to stay. You know, I didn't have to not do anything. And uh, the difference was, you know, being there. Also, being nine months in as opposed to five years mm. or four years, four, yeah, four years, like, I feel like I'm exponentially better than I was then. My, I have a couple of the same stuff because it's, like, my good stuff mm. that, like, you know, I've built and made so much better. Right. Cut fat, added this, taken that out, whatever, move shit around. But it's so much different because it's similar in the fact that it's still – one of the coolest things I got to do, mm -hmm. for sure, because mm -hmm. anytime I get to do anything with somebody like that, especially him, is dope. Hell yeah. I'll never take that for granted. You Absolutely. Know? Like, that's the goal. And, um, and but the difference was I'm not in the theater with 2,200 people in Louisiana. I'm in the comedy store, the, right. the best fucking comedy club in the world or here or whatever you want to call it. I think it is. And I'm doing the main room of the comedy store, which is the best one. And that was actually the first time I got to do a real show in there. I've done Kill Tony in there twice, and I oh, did nice. Roast Battle in there during the pandemic with barely anybody in there. Right. So this was my real first time doing an actual set in the main room of the comedy store. Another fucking little check of, like, valid, I did this. Mm -hmm. I can do this. I'm getting the opportunity. I'm going to do it. I did it, and I crushed. Right. I can do this. Yeah. Now, anytime I get to do that again... When, however long that may be, I know I did it, and I did it good. Right. So so you find opening up for Theo at the Comedy Store was more of a uh, a bucket list thing for you than going out and performing in a theater with 2,200 people? Yeah, because, I mean, both of them are, you know, didn't seem like they didn't— I didn't even really fathom doing either of those things when I started. Mm -hmm. That's never, true. I started and didn't even think about that. That's true. I didn't have any— Lucrative or what do you call it? Um, like aspirations. Well, I had goals. like goals and aspirations, right. but like I never thought it would. Never come thought to life. I'd do any of that shit in the first couple years. In the first couple years, let alone the first fucking year. I don't know how that works. Yeah, I know anything you do, you got to work hard at it. And how long they're gonna take you to get from here to there? You know, but right. Everybody's different. Everybody's story is different. It's just a matter of you know what do you what do you want? What are you gonna do to get it? And you know. It's a, like a combination of opportunity and, and talent and work. Mm. You have great opportunity and great talent, but if you don't work. Exactly. And they always say that talent and hard work will bring opportunities, right? We were talking about. Same uh, shit, yeah. Like they say it a bunch of ways, but, you know, those are that's, that's what it is. It's like you could be the most talented person and work hard, but if you don't talk to nobody or meet nobody or whatever, you ain't going to get no opportunity. Yeah. You got to be in front of people. You got to talk to people, meet people, whatever. So how would you, how, like, just bouncing off of what you just said, just meeting people and getting to know them, how much of that do you think is in the comedy game, like percentage-wise, right? Like, obviously, with writing and doing the stand-up, that's a large part, but actually going out and meeting people to where they can put you on shows and just hanging out at the store, hanging out with other comedians. How, I mean... Because... How, how, like, how important do you think that is in the I comedy game? I think it's game? Pretty, pretty damn important. I think it's important... Especially, I don't know how big of the 
pie chart, how big of a piece of the pie chart that is, but it's a pretty damn big slice in my opinion because, you know, you if you don't meet nobody, if you don't talk to nobody, you ain't, they got enough people that are, that they do know that are cool or people that are, you know, aggravating the shit out of like bookers or people that produce True, shows yeah. to, to get on their show. Like they ain't going to randomly just look for you and find you and be like, oh, this guy looks like he might be funny. Hey, would you like to do that? That's not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. It's like if you want something, you got to go get it. And I'm not saying go out there and be up somebody's ass yeah. or fucking begging for this and that because that's a fucking different story. Yeah. People do something. <laughs> to each their own. That ain't my flavor. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I'm just talking. To, I don't got no. Just do you. I don't look for none of that shit. Right. I just talk to people. I don't Sorry. know who some of these people even are, and I become friends with them, or, and they end up doing this. I'm like, oh, that's cool. They're like, hey, we got to get you to do this. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'd like to. I'm not like, hey, bro, I heard you run a really good show. Can I uh, do that sometime? Like, some people can do that, and that's fine. Yeah. And, you know, all about how you present yourself, I guess. But there's a difference between being hungry and being thirsty. Mm. We all hungry. We all want to eat. We all want to succeed. We all want to do good. If you're thirsty, you're desperate, annoying, insincere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So just be real. Yeah. Talk to somebody, whether it's somebody you know that does this or don't know who the fuck they is. Just talk to them, be cool with them. Right. Like, I didn't even know you was, we became cool. I didn't even know you was a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> you told me, and I was like, oh, dope, dude, fuck yeah. 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 You just told me you liked my show. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, thanks, player, I appreciate you. you and, was it your old lady? Yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. It was you and your old lady after the show. You're like, dude, you were funny and shit. I was like, thanks, player, I appreciate y'all. Come back to the next one. Huh? Yeah, dude, no. Yeah, that, that, that fucking comic word is hilarious, bro. You're a hilarious host. Thanks, man. Hilarious, bro. It's just, again something I've, I knew that I learned with you. Obviously, doing the comic wars, you're a host there, and you're riffing a lot on the crowd. Yeah, I don't have you none do, of that prepared. Yeah, that's so crazy that when you go up there and like when you do your stuff, uh, you know, your jokes and stuff. Like when you do an actual set, you said that you kind of not shy away from that, but you're more so just want to highlight your jokes, which makes sense. You're a stand up. But yeah, I mean, if I'm. You know, because, like, the shows I do, I'm not headlining. I'm not doing 30 minutes. Most mm. of, you know, I'm doing, you know, f between 5 and 10 minutes, 5 and 15 minutes or whatever, depending on the spot. And I'm not – most of the time I'm opening. Most mm. of the time I'm cold opening. Mm -hmm. Or doing a guest spot on a sh friend's show or something. And, like, if I'm cold opening I'm or hosting, I'm not doing – I got 5 minutes, 7 minutes. I'm not – Wasting any of that time bullshitting with the crowd because multiple reasons. Number one, I only got this amount of time. I want to get my good shit in because that's the point of doing it. Exactly. Two, yeah, you could be in the moment and fuck with the crowd and shit, but they got eight other, com five, six, seven, twelve other comics on the damn lineup, including whoever's the headliners. They're gonna be doing that, so you're taking that shit away from them. You're already talking to the fat dude in the hat or the <laughs> dumbass with a mustache or the whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, absolutely. The, the couple over there, oh, how long y'all been together? Dirt. Like, you don't want to do that. Right. If you get an opportunity to do some shit, do your best five fucking minutes or your best seven or whatever the fuck it is. Because that's why you have five minutes is right. that opportunity. So do it. That's like a, Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Like that's a, like an unwritten, like a good unwritten rule that not a lot of people maybe know about. You know what I mean? Especially maybe. someone new like me who's gonna yeah hopefully I mean, I, have opportunities to open for people. I learn as I go. Mm. When I moved out here, I didn't know nobody. Mm -hmm. I didn't know nothing, and then I started you know meeting people and doing this and started doing it, and there it is. Yeah. You know? When you first started, was a lot of your jokes uh, Louisiana like related? Because yeah, yeah cause that's I, what I know. Right. I talk about what, talk about what you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know goddamn thing about abortion, <laughs> so I'm not doing bits on abortion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't give a fucking rat's ass about so much of the shit that I hear about in these premises and top, and that's great because the audience does. I'm sure they know about that shit, so do it. Yeah. Me personally, I could think that this is a funny ass joke. You ain't going to hear me saying something like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because right, I, right. I don't have, I know about what I know about. I got, you know, experience in a lot of shit. So I'll talk about that. Right. So, and especially because they don't have a lot of people where I'm from out here. They got a couple, mm -hmm. but they ain't got a lot. Mm -hmm. so Some of these people only know shit about, you know, Louisiana or people from there or whatever based on what they saw on TV or, right. or somebody's cousin. But everybody, when I find, they find out I'm from there, they... 
you know, they all have a story about like, oh, dude, I love New Orleans, or I really yeah. want to go there, or this one time I went there with my buddies and we had a great time, or my family's from there, or whatever. Right. But that's always good, so that's good. Okay. So, because so, right now I'm like trying to figure out how to make jokes about where I'm from, Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't, and I don't know if it's like a thing where people knows a lot more about Vegas and what it is as opposed to kind of the culture in Louisiana. Like I, I'm basically saying that maybe people are more, the audience is more interested in someone from Louisiana because it's so different, right? As opposed to someone from Vegas. Maybe. I mean, right? Cause I, nothing, I, I can't find anything that well, works. Well, I mean, somehow. I'll tell you this, like my personal, I don't know. I never been to Vegas. Mm-hmm. I, I want to go. I never been. I heard it's great. I heard it's like New Orleans cousin in the desert. Mm. That sounds dope. Yeah, but I've never been there. So how do you how do you what, like what do you look for in Louis like n- Louisiana jokes to bring in to tell? Like what do you look for? Like what are some of the pieces? I if, mean, I kind of look me? at you know just whatever comes to mind. I mean, I look for things that are you know almost like like something that's like that they might like the audience is like it's general enough that they would know. Like Mardi Gras, like the, like even if you've never been, you heard of Mardi Gras before, right. more right. likely than not. Right. What do you think it is? Oh, everybody's got different things. They've been there, they thought about it, they heard this, they heard that. Sure, I don't even do no bits on fucking Mardi Gras, mm-hmm. even though I should. Mm. I'm gonna write that down. There you go. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, shit like that. Like, and also I I just tell my what do you say the truth? Mm. Like I just tell stories from back home and things that I've done or dealt with or do did work or whatever. And, you know, that's always fun. And also just kind of like quickly establishing that I ain't from here. Mm. I'm different. Mm. This is what I am. This is, I'm not an asshole. I just don't know a lot about this shit. I'm willing to learn what you call, I'm a dummy, but I'm not a bigot, mm. even though I look like yeah. a big ass <laughs> bigot. I ain't. I didn't know what a bigot was <laughs> until I moved here. And somebody said, oh, you fucking bigot. And I was like, big what? And I was like, no, bigot. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Like a, no I shit, thought it was a, a synonym for the slur that has a, a got at the back. You know what I'm saying? But I was like, what the fuck you say to me? <laughs> Dude, that's great right there already. <laughs> that's, that's, that's Like, good. that's just a real thing. And I was like, I don't know. But... I ain't that. <laughs> so <laughs> that is hilarious, bro. That's pretty funny. Okay, that's a good note. I guess yeah. take what like for me, like I never been to Vegas, but I know gambling. I mm. know strippers. Yeah. I know the Raiders. I know the desert. And I know the hangover. Mm. <laughs> the movie. Those yeah, the are movie. the things I know. What do you know about you ever been to New Orleans? New Orleans? Uh no, never. What is, what's anything I you know? I know about it's New humid Orleans? there. I know there's like maybe swampy. I know beignets. beignets. They got Fire beignets, from what I hear, and then the architecture is pretty cool. Oh, it's very, very true. Yeah. See, so it's like little things like that, and I don't only, I don't even have no bits on really any of that. Yeah. Alligators. <laughs> but see, that's better. That's a better fucking premise, though. Alligators, right? As opposed to a fucking beignet. Well, no, but I'm like beignets, like I, <laughs> that's what we used, I used to call the two Hooters chicks back in Louisiana. They used to come to the club and work that all the time. I used to call them my beignets because I did coke off the titties once. <laughs> I called them, I called the titties beignets because I see the powder. <laughs> That's great. Bro. I love the that. Beignets, how y'all doing? <laughs> I love that, man. Uh, you said years you ago. Said, yeah. <laughs> what? What is you? You you obviously been to Mardi Gras. Yeah. 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 What's, what's that Since like, bro? Since I was bro? fucking a kid. Oh no shit. Yeah, and I worked it the last six years. I lived there. I wonder. Yeah, that's probably that probably is like a Vegas then, like that, especially around there, around Mardi yeah. Gras. Yeah. Probably even better because no one would be fucking throwing beads and then you receive titties. You know what I mean? Like there's no bead throwing in Vegas. Oh, but it's like, yeah, they fucking do. Yeah, I didn't know how you meant in Vegas. Yeah, then, in New Orleans, yeah, for sure. I mean, I remember growing up at fucking, what was it, uh, Girls Gone Wild. I remember Thought watching it. Like a Mardi Gras. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, man. That was fucking. That's where they be going wild. That's for damn sure. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Mardi Gras, I learned that not all titties are good titties. Yeah. <laughs> You see some really oh, yeah. fucking cool ones, some of the coolest ever. You also see some shit that's like, yeah, that's a titty? Yeah. Damn. Ugh. That's wild that they be, like, arresting people for just when they show, like, their vagina or their dick, and then when they show their titties, it's just completely fine. They do that? Yeah. I've seen videos on Worldstar. Oh, damn. Yeah. On Worldstar, I've seen those videos, dude. <laughs> 
don't know. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people do shit like that, and I ain't never seen them get arrested. Mm. Uh, wrong place, wrong time. Yeah, wrong place, wrong time, dude. Um, fuck 12. Fuck, yeah, dude. <laughs> You uh, so when you opened up for Adam Ray, he took you to the Super Bowl. Is this what happened? Yeah, yeah. Um, Adam's one of the coolest people in the world. He dude. is, bro. He really is. He really and, is. Uh, you know, what I mean, and we're talking one day, and you know, uh, I had been kind of going through it, and he was like, you know, I was bullshitting with him about because he was asking me, so you know, I right. wouldn't just go up and tell him I'm fucking yeah got problems. Yeah, but he exactly. Was like, he was asking, so I was telling him because he's my friend. Mm. And he was like, oh, man. He's like, what are you doing this weekend? I was like, nothing. He's like, do you want to come? Do you want to come to Arizona? Come do come to the Super Bowl and, like, hang out for, like, the Super Bowl weekend? I'm not going to the game, but, like, hang out for the weekend and go to a couple parties and shit and then do a show on, like, the day of the Super Bowl at the comedy club and watch the Super Bowl there and shit. I was like, yeah. Dude, yeah, I'll be there. Wild. And that was dope as shit. And that was, you know. Almost four years in the comedy, because yeah, I've just been doing comedy for four and four years and some change, four and a half years now. So how how was that experience compared to the again opening for Theo nine months in? I mean, like, well, this was the first time I ever did comedy not in California or Louisiana, so that was different. And how'd your jokes go? Really good. Yeah, that's what I was curious about. Was how's that gonna work? Because I'm not. A lot, not all of it, but like a lot of my stuff is like I live. I'm from Louisiana, and now I live in California, and this is this. This is how they similar. This is how they different. Whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, do people in Arizona gonna are they gonna give a fuck? Right. But like, they gave. A, they cared. They liked it because yeah. I noticed after being there a few days because I was there a couple of days for the show, and uh, people in Arizona were cool as shit. I didn't. I never. You know, I got friends from Arizona, mm-hmm. but I never knew how I was gonna be there. But it was cool. I liked them. They were very chill people. Yeah. So. I got along with all the people I met, and they liked my shit. They mm-hmm. thought it was funny. Mm-hmm. Do you have to, uh, when you open up for someone specific, like someone different, do you have to kind of change your jokes, like the like what you talk about and stuff like that, or like how even like more silly you have mm. to go or anything like that? Is that something that ever comes up in your mind? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I always think about that kind of stuff, but like I got, you know, honestly, I probably got, you know, 20 polished good minutes. I can do 20 polished good minutes comfortably. Mm-hmm. I can do like 30. Some of the other shit's kind of fucking still work. Still got a little bit of work. Mm-hmm. And all that other 20 probably still got work. But for b- purposes, I can do 20 comfortably. But if I'm opening for somebody, you get five, right. seven, eight, at the max, 10. But more mm-hmm. likely than not, it's five, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. So I'm like, all right, well, I have my five, I have a six, I have a seven, I have mm. an eight. Because that way I know no matter what the time, because sometimes you don't know. The freaking first time I opened for Theo, he didn't tell me how much time I was doing until right before the show. Damn. I was, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. Nine months not not that shit. he needed to, but right. like I was just like, uh, I never thought about uh, how much time I'm doing. Oh, uh, fuck. So I prepared a five, I prepared a six, no I prepared shit. a seven, I prepared an eight, and I prepared a ten, just in case. Because I don't want to be unprepared. Right. So, like, if I'm doing five minutes, I know this is the this jokes I'm going to use because that's about five. That's exactly five minutes. I've timed it. I know it. Even given some variable here and there. I know that's five minutes. Mm-hmm. Same thing with six minutes. Same thing with seven minutes. Same thing with eight minutes. Same thing with ten. Damn, dude. So it's... And all, do all of them consist the same joke? Like, is, is, is your... The first five minutes is pretty much going to always be there. Gotcha. For the, for the most part. Gotcha. Because that's the... So far, that's the five minutes that I got that lets them know who I am and gets them to gets the audience to understand who I am pretty quick mm-hmm. and not have to, you know, who is this motherfucker? What, what, what do you look? Why he look like this? But he don't be acting like that. Mm-hmm. Or maybe he, is. Mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like get them to un- get who I am, get them to understand who I am as quickly as possible. Right. And then that way I can start telling stories I want to tell. And um. Yeah, and most of the time that five is going to be the, the pretty much that five. And then, you know, that three is going to be the three. Five going to be the five. Mm-hmm. 
But then, like, if I got six, maybe I take out the last chunk of the five and put in a different story because uh. it's got an extra minute to it. Does that make sense? Like one story wow. only takes two minutes to tell. One story takes three minutes to tell. One story takes fucking five. Damn, you've done it like that, bro, where you've fucking done the minutes and then you know what to... Yeah, I record everything and I listen to it. Jesus, dude. You have to. That's how you, get, that's how you know how much time you're doing. You know what Fuck. I'm saying? Voice record all your shit. Yeah. Listen to when it starts, when they introduce you. Start the time. Look at the time. It's because I always right before I go up, when I know I'm on deck, I'm standing there, whatever. And then right when the uh, like host is taking the other person off the stage and bringing me up mm-hmm. or whatever, or that other person that's bringing me straight up is about to be done, I hit voice record in my pocket and put it in my pocket and either put it on a stool or put it whatever in my pocket or on the stool. And then when I'm done, I turn it off. And when I get you know, after the show, when I on my way home or when I'm home, listen to it and okay, I started at sixteen seconds into the recording. Mm. Ended at five minutes and sixteen seconds. Okay. Well that's fucking perfectly five minutes. Or ended at five minutes and forty two seconds. Oh, I was only supposed to do five minutes. I ended up doing yeah. fucking four out four, five minutes and whatever X or seconds. That way you know, okay. Well, that was because they was laughing, so that's okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Don't run the fucking light. Right. But how are how is it in those big theaters? Do they have do they still have like they give you the light and shit like that? Is there still a light that they give you? I or? mean, it depends on where you're at. I mean, in a theater, I only did a theater one time mm-hmm. and they had a timer. Gotcha. Like, looking at like right in front. Like the, on the floor. Gotcha. Like on the stage. Gotcha. So like you can see like, you know, what it's counting up. So right. it's like five minutes. 503, 504, 5, whatever. Um, so they had that. But, like, mm-hmm. some places will have, like, a little clock up in the back. Some places will have a light. Some people will have this and that. And mm-hmm. You're very meticulous about it. That's what, that's, what I, you I, mean? Uh, it, like, with, even with the timing, like, how oh, long yeah, each dude. joke De- is. That's crazy. How, like, yeah, man, that's crazy how meticulous you are. I mean, I'm not going to – you don't even look – you don't look like that. You know what I mean? That yeah. you are that meticulous with this stuff. But. I can't spell meticulous. <laughs> don't ask me. <laughs> but, Yeah. Attention to detail. I mean, it's something I care about. It's right. something I want to be good at. Right, and right, true. I want to know, you know, if somebody's giving me seven minutes, okay, well, I want to make sure I'm doing seven minutes. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to go over and I'm not trying to go under. I'm trying better to go under than go over. Right. So that's like a, a, an unri- another unwritten rule. Better yeah, to go write under. write that bitch down. That's, Even if that's it's a written. minute under, as long yeah, as you go yeah, under. Way yeah. better to go out doing really good a minute under than it is to go out doing all this extra shit, yeah. getting your shit in, running the light. It's mm-hmm. disrespectful to the other people on the show. It's disrespectful to the crowd, disrespectful to the fucking producer, in right. my opinion. Yeah. If you're crushing and it's not that big a fucking deal, sure, run the fucking light a little bit. Who cares? Whatever. Every, there's no black and white. It's mm-hmm. always gray. Mm-hmm. Until you've been doing it for a little time. I don't ever do that shit. Yeah. yeah I don't ever yeah. be running the light. Right, 100%. If I run the light, it's by five fucking seconds, and that's because yeah. they was laughing. Yeah. Ten fucking seconds because they was laughing. That's why. Right. If I ever run lights because they my laugh break was bigger than I expected it to be, mm. or so there was an extra one that I didn't expect. Mm. And you're and you're adding that into into like uh, laugh breaks and stuff like that. You're adding it. I into mean, I it. listen to the damn set. So, so like, if this I joke see. hits really good, the laugh is usually about, you know, is it just a <laughs> or is it like a blah. And give them a, you know, takes a few seconds. Like, you can hear the, how big a laugh these jokes are getting on the recording. Right. And you can hear it. Yeah. Always, and I'm sure, how many of these have you done, these podcasts? This podcast is 32. Oh, damn, 32. Fuck yeah, dude. 32, good, 33. Good shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sure one of the 30, the, the other 31 have said, don't fucking step on the laughs. Don't fucking step on the laughs. No, no one has. <laughs> well... <laughs> I'm telling you yeah. now, 32. Don't step on the fucking laughs. The whole point of a joke is to get them to laugh. That's, if you step on the fucking, if you get a, a joke, if you do a joke and they start laughing, and then you, before they finish, you start doing more shit, that's like, that's like saying, hey, let me see your titties, and then them showing you their titties. <laughs> And then you being like, oh, cool, cool, but can I see your titties? Like, I'm looking at them, <laughs> motherfucker. I'm already looking at them. Why the fuck am I going to ask you to show me again when I'm already looking at them? Yeah, I'm going to see them again, 
but not immediately. Like, I'm going to enjoy this. Yeah. And when you put the shirt back down, then I'm going to say, oh, can I see them again? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that was really enough. cool. I want to do that again. That's a like, good analogy. That's, that's how I look at it. <laughs> Because I see some people do a joke and it's crushing and then they're so anchor, so like anxious, anxious yeah. or, or excited. And look, I'm not saying don't do it when they're laughing because you can ride that wave of like mm -hmm. if it's let it hit. And then once you hear it start to decline, then you can jump on it. But give it a second. Figure you'll feel that out as you go because right. you'll know when to do that and when not to. Right. Because like you don't want to let them laugh all the way down to silence. You kind of want to make it like a. Damn, bro! You know, like get a flow of it. Like yeah, a, like, like in, music like, like almost. Or well, like I got get, I maybe music, but like uh, like Mortal Kombat, like a combo. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you know the timing of like when you punch them and then like they go up in the air and like right before they hit the ground, you hit them again. And yeah, you, that's how you get the combo. Right, same fucking thing. So that and that's just an experience thing, then, huh? That's not something you can teach. You just have to feel that out. You just and gotta get figure experience. it out. Yeah, I mean, if you know that this is this joke always does well. Mm -hmm. Cool. How well? Sometimes it, it's a one, sometimes it's a ten. Whatever the fucking analogy, you know. Sometimes yeah. it hits really hard. Sometimes it don't. Sometimes it depends on the crowd. Sometimes it depends on the delivery. Sometimes it depends on the fucking show. It depends on everything. Like there's so many variables in this shit. Because you could have the best set ever, do the same exact set somewhere else the next night. Completely different. Yeah, right. Or vice versa. You could have the worst set ever. You try the same set the mm. next day and it could be... One of the best. There's there's literally all these variables that go into all that shit, and it's never a you know A plus B equals C type deal for the most part. Sometimes, but. yeah. So you never know really what you're gonna get into, really. Like yeah, you that's just right. Gotta you gotta trust your and You gotta you know observe the room and read the room. Read the room. You gotta mm -hmm. read that bitch, mm -hmm. and um, you know the audience, the other, you know look at the other comics on the show. Do you know them? Do you know what kind of shit they do? Is this whose crowd is this? Is that their crowd? Is that just this place's crowd? Oh, is shit. that are they here for this person and you're just there, or are they here just for a good show and they don't know this and that? Or? And are you switching up your uh, your set based on those things? If something was to occur where I see something like that, solid five minutes, you're gonna switch that up. More likely than not, no. But like, if it's a bigger show, no, absolutely not. Yeah. But if it's a smaller show, maybe yeah. If it's a smaller you know, show with a couple people there, and I wanted to, you know, they they seem like a crowd that would be having fun. Maybe I can try out some different shit. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying do your A-plus every fucking show because you want to develop more stuff and you want to build more of a, find out what works well. Right, right. Well, do you like this better? Because it's about what you like. Mm. And also, what do the do you think the audience is going to like? And then finding that middle of this is what I want to do, and this is what I think they want to, they would like out of that. That way you build the best possible for you and them. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's offense and defense. There you go. There you go, dude. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you got to adjust. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you think this is going to go good and then you realize that they ain't liking this shit. Uh, okay. So anyways, instead of doing the rest of that joke or adding all these extra tags that you do, now fuck that. Yeah. They not into this shit. Let me just get into the next thing. Is, is has there ever have you ever been in a position where you, I mean, I guess maybe not because this doesn't happen, but where you where you feel like you bailed too early on a joke, but then you think about it after and you're like, man, I should have just maybe kept going. Oh yeah, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done that where I felt like because I feel like I've been bailing a little bit too early on some of my jokes lately. Like in in what way? Like do you have like. Like I know, is like, it like another part of the joke, or is it just a tag? A, a tag that I think would be more powerful than the tag I just said, and but because I didn't get the laughs with the first tag, I just threw that second one that I thought was going to get more laughs away, or I just didn't even like go to it. I mean, sometimes it's probably the right move, and sometimes mm. maybe you should try it out. And, yeah, because if that first tag is like a jab, the second tag maybe is another jab, or mm. the second tag might be a fucking haymaker. Right. They might have been ready for that fucking jab, but they ain't ready for the haymaker. Does mm, that make sense? Yeah. It could also be they don't like the fucking jab. Yeah, exactly. They ain't, yeah. ain't going to damn sure ain't going to like the haymaker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it could be. Yeah, it, it, that's the hard part of that shit is you never know. You got to kind of just take a risk. Mm. And you got to read the room, do your thing, adjust, figure it out as you go. And at the end of the day, do what the fuck you want to do. Yeah. How, how do you navigate yourself throughout this crazy, weird World of comedy, bro. Day to day. Yeah. Straight up. I mean, I I got 
I mean, in what way? <laughs> like, hmm. That's a long, that's a hard, yeah. you know, I mean, I guess I am always myself. Mm -hmm. I'm never, this is a, a fucking fake ass town. You can see it pretty fucking quick. Yeah. Who's yeah. real and who ain't. Yeah, bro. And real recognize real and real recognize fake ass jackasses too. Yeah. Cool with everybody. Right. Be cool with everybody. 100%. Don't go out there and make enemies. If somebody you meet and you don't like them that much, cool. What's up, player? And keep going. Yeah, yeah. You don't got to be a dick. Just yeah. what's up, player? Keep going. Right. You know, don't and, and that's that's probably not people you want to invite to your house for exactly. the weekend. Exactly. But like sometimes you meet people that are fucking dope as shit, and you know, why am I going off on that tangent? Um, how do I navigate through it? Yeah. Always be yourself. Be cool with people. Be genuine. Be real. That's the best. Yeah. Because then you'll naturally gravitate. Run into and become friends with the the, the right people mm. at the right times, and they can help you just by being your friend. They can help you by maybe giving you a spot somewhere, giving you opportunity to do something, whatever. Like you never know. Uh, it ain't about what you can get from nobody; it's what you can bring to the table. Right, right, absolutely. So your value. Yeah, not what can you do for me. What can I do for you? But like, not even that really. It's just more like, hey, what's up, player? You know, just be real. Yeah. What's up, dude? What you doing? What's your story? What you what you into? Absolutely. How's your this going? Yeah. <clears throat> you uh four or five years in, is it do you still find it difficult sometimes to be authentic on stage? As, do I find it hard to be authentic? Yeah, on stage. Like the like real, real you? Because you know, like there's a real well, us. No, but there's then, a real us, but it's like what part? Because like I, I really am an asshole. I'm also really am not an asshole. I also really am, you know, a bouncer. Yeah. I also really am a lot of other things than a fucking bouncer. Yeah, yeah. I also am a, you know, I don't know. You a romantic fella? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? You like yeah. poems and shit? <laughs> I've written a couple here and there. <laughs> Yeah, dude. I have. Yeah, and recently, have you? Not in a while. I bet the stand-up probably helps, too, in poem writing, probably. In oh, some I'm ways, sure it right? would. Right? I don't know. I mean, I've done it before, but mm -hmm. I ain't did it in a long time. I took the class in college. Ah, so. uh, okay. But, I mean, I did it before that, and I did it after that. Yeah. It's an easy way to, not necessarily to, you know, be writing them just because, but, like, if you got a lot of thoughts and you don't really know how to get them out, sometimes that's a fun way to try to figure out how to say what you want to say Shit, without dude. actually having to say it, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Figure it, it out and kind of like, write it as like metaphors and shit, and then you look at it and you're like, oh, fuck, that was actually dank as shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that poem dank as shit. That bitch hitting. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, you funny motherfucker, dude. Yeah, I'll be, you know. People say that I appreciate it. Yeah, um, but well, what was what was he? The poems. Oh, that poems, but before yeah. that. Um, for that romantic. You were romantic. Romantic. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, what part do you show yourself? What yeah, yeah, part do you yeah. Show? Yeah, exactly. It's like I am romantic. But I don't be fucking doing no shit about being romantic. Maybe I should try that. Maybe, it, dude. That could be a cool angle. So when you do like the twenty minutes, are you working in blocks? Like we just had Bruce Gray on podcast earlier over here and he was talking about how his hour now is he's broken down in blocks like he's yeah, got 15 definitely minute be. blocks yeah yeah i mean i'm sure that makes plenty that makes perfect sense because you i always do my shit in chunks and now i ain't got no hour if he's if he's talking about an hour yeah. that makes plenty of sense because it's just one bigger it's just cutting your little chunks into bigger blocks yeah like i said about the six and the eight and right exactly right that kind of shit do that for 15, then you do that for another 15, then another 15, then another 15. That's a fucking hour. Yeah. So, yeah. I do mine. I know I like this bit. I like this bit. I like this bit. I like this bit. They all go together. That's 10. I mm -hmm. know these all go together. That's 15. And they got a good flow to them. Right. They're it's all not like, like I'm talking about <clears throat> this and then being like, so anyways, what about this over here? It's like I've built my shit where it's like, okay, this. It's like, oh. Speaking of that, this goes into this. And, right. and like, oh, yeah, like that one time this happened. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And taking two jokes and putting them into one. That Almost you just like, like a good transition. Right, or like, right. Uh, well, And it don't have to be like that. Don't, that ain't no rule. 
Mm. I mean, that's just how I do it because, like, I, I want to make sure I remember what I'm saying. Mm. I want to know what goes into this and feel natural. Right, exactly. It's like storytelling. This, it's talking storytelling, about right? this and then going straight into this is fun mm-hmm. because it's like that kind of leads off of that. You don't have to, but I like it like that. Yeah. And it works pretty well. It makes it easy to listen. Exactly. Exactly, you know? yeah. It's not like you fade out and fade in. But you're, like, you're, but you're the, the, the weaving of all yeah. the stories yeah. together. If I'm over here like, talking about being romantic and writing poems, it's probably, you know, and then I go over here to talking about fucking uh, damn avocados. You know what I'm saying? Like, versus, like, I could go from talking about romantic and writing poems to, like, hoes. Right, yeah. That, yeah because yeah, that's yeah, okay, an easier okay. transition from... Poems and romance to fucking hoes. Right. I wrote, I wrote this one bitch a poem and found out she was a hoe. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wrote a hoe a poem. A hoe. You should. You, uh, should. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. that's a way easier transition as opposed to yeah, I was writing poems. Yeah. So so anyways, you know, what fucking sucks avocados. Them bitches <laughs> fucking suck ass. Yeah. I don't get it, California. Why the fuck is it? Why do y'all season everything with ava fucking cotta? It ain't got no fucking flavor. You fucking. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Charging eight dollars for fucking <laughs> bullshit. No, it's wild, bro. That avocado shit is wild. My old lady's from here, and she loves avocado. Yeah, like, that's cool, baby. But if the avocados is out, the, missing out the fridge, baby, I promise you, <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> they don't have avocados in New Orleans, or anything? I'm sure they fucking yeah, but do. But it's just not like a thing that you'll eat. Yeah, bro. I've eaten guacamole. Yeah. <laughs> that's got fucking avocado with what flavor? Don't it? Yeah. <laughs> with flavor <laughs> Shit in it It ain't just the damn avocado cut up Right? Yeah They put shit in it Yeah So you don't need to ever eat Like an avocado by itself No Yeah Why the fuck am I gonna do that? <laughs> I seen it No I'm good You should come up with a bit though About the poem I think that'd be fucking hilarious to see Okay Yeah I'll write that yeah. down to poems My favorite <laughs> Speaking of poems Like Growing up like, I, I was, like, you know, I don't, it's not like I watched Stand Up all the time growing up as a kid, but, like, I remember watching Andrew Dice Clay. He's my one of my favorites, like, one of the goats He's always, great. but, like, I just love that motherfucker. And, like, my cousin and my uncle would always, were younger, well, mm-hmm. older than me, but, you know, not grown people yet. Right, right. And when I was a little kid, I seen, like, they would listen to Dice and they would be quoting the poems like Hickory Dickory Doc, the bitch you suck my that's cock, that right. kind of shit. Yeah, that's right. And like I'd always watch that clip, them clips of like his poems. He'd right. call them poems. <laughs> Little nursery rhymes, he called them poems. And I'm like, that's so funny. Like I would love to have my, like I would never, you know, do that because he's not that. But right, like, right. That is dope. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. It's like, again, it's just you'd never expect it from him, but he's making that poem that's what his I'm, own. Exactly. Yeah, bro. And I think that's something with you, too. You could do Maybe not, do. obviously not no, like not, him, but like that, your but way. Like, yeah, talk about how I did a poem this one time for this bitch, one, whatever. Slipped it in a locker. Yeah. No, it's good. It's, it's good. I think that, that would hit, especially, again, someone who looks like you talking about poems. That's fucking hilarious, bro. Like poem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like me some poems. Yeah, dude. Poems are great. Because they make you think. It, it, you said it right, dude. Like, they make you think, and they make you write it down metaphorically, and it gives you different perspective on things, dude. How does this make you feel? Yeah, exactly. I'm not much of a poem writer. I've been, I've tried, you know what I mean? But I don't know. I'm not. It ain't You it. seem like you're good with your words, though. Thanks. Honestly. You you seem like, did you read a lot as a kid or anything like yeah, that? Yeah. I mean, not a lot, but I read. Yeah. Like, I read, like, you know, shit. I read Harry Potter books, and I read other shit, and... Mm-hmm. A, a bunch of shit. Shit, bro, you read more than me. I never got to the Harry Potter books. I said, oh. fuck that. Seven of them? Well, when I started reading them, there was only fucking what, two or <laughs> yeah. three. I didn't, it wasn't that daunting of a task. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, all my other friends was reading them and shit, and they're like, this shit's dope. I'm like, oh, I'll check it out. Fuck it. There you no, go. I'll read dude. that shit. I've never read any Harry Potter book. Just and I liked it, and I'll yeah. read it, you know? You like the movies? Yeah. Yeah. You watch movies at all? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that's right. Waterboy is your favorite movie. Yeah, that's I right. mean, Waterboy is my favorite movie, but I like a bunch of movies. I like a bunch of shit from yeah. different flavors. Yeah. But, yeah, um, I like the movies. I think the books is better. But it's what anybody says pretty much about any book that became a movie Very is true. everybody's like, the book's better. Very true. Because I read the fucking book, and it got way more shit on it. And, yeah. You know, I get it. Yeah. The movie, But even if you never read the book, the movie's still tight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Let me see here. I got some notes here. All right. 
Oh, what would you tell yourself when you were six months in, comp- where you are now? Like, what would you, what would a piece of advice would you have given yourself six months in to the game? Um, a bunch of shit, but I guess like pretty much whatever. Like, it, it sucks. Like, damn it, I hate to say it because it's so like cliche and bullshit, but like, <clears throat> like when I. I was, what, eight months in? Uh-huh. I did Kill Tony for the first time. And that was just one minute. When I, it was out here still? When it was out here, before COVID. And uh, I did the one minute. Did not do good on the one minute. <laughs> I've only been doing comedy for eight months. I did not do fucking good on the minute. But I had one good zinger in there. One one good little laugh. But it was like, okay, I could tell how nervous I was. Like, watching mm, the video yeah, back, I'm yeah. like, I could see how nervous I was. I could see all this shit. And, yeah, of course I'm going to be fucking whatever. Right. Andrew Schultz was the guest. Oh, shit. He's one of my favorites, yeah, too. he's great, dude. He's one of my favorites. And he was, the like, the guest judge panel or mm. whatever over there. And him and Tony on that, like, talking to me, like, the little interview part, mm-hmm. I always, like, that was fucking exponentially helpful for me to grow because that's what the point of this fucking show is anyways but like it did that for me how, really, how so because they pulled like I where you watch the video and you can tell like I got more comfortable on stage I talked like myself on stage at the beginning I didn't I was nervous I was whatever but you oh. can see the transition of me being nervous doing that one minute to getting comfortable and just talking with them no shit and making them laugh because I'm just telling them the truth right <laughs> bullshitting whatever and I was like, and like they said, like gave me some good advice saying like, that's the shit you need to be doing. That's the shit that's funny. That's, oh, that's why you're funny. Okay, bet. Like, get it. I get it now. Yeah. You know, that kind of shit. And then like the next night after the Kill Tony, the next night, Andrew Schultz was on the patio talking to some people and I walked by and I wanted to say, hey, and, but I was like, I was talking to people. I don't want to interrupt them. So I was right. walking by and he's like, hey, Nate. And I was like, oh, what's up, player? <laughs> he was like, oh, fucking like the other guys I guess were leaving he's like hey man he's like good stuff last night very funny I was like dude thank you I was like that means the world you know Damn, that's, bro, no that, that means a lot I was like you know I really appreciate your help he's like man all I'm gonna tell you is keep going keep going you'll figure it out keep going you'll figure it out you're funny Keep going, you'll figure it out. That's that, what he said. That seems like that's just a note from everybody, dude. Just keep going. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, because like, it's like if you, if it's something you want to do, you take the dubs, you take the L's, you learn, and you work. Yeah. Wins, losses, learn, and work. That's, what, that's all it is. Right. You have to keep doing that. And the more you do, you know, you either apply it or you don't. Right. It's trial and error. Sometimes you think you should do this and you do it and you're like, fuck, I shouldn't have did that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you try something and you're like, fuck yeah, I did that. That was, that's what I should, that worked, yes. Yeah. And everything in between. So it's it's very much a, I wish I could say, do this and this will happen. Yeah. That ain't how it is. Some things, work hard, you'll get better. That's a thing. Does that make sense? Absolutely, dude. It's not like, dude, make fun of yourself and then tell a story yeah, about exactly, a fucking yeah. time your fucking dick didn't work. Like, who gives a fuck? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that'll all come together once you trial and error. Yeah. Once you practice, once you, you know, figure out what works and what don't and put it together how you want. It's a puzzle. Mm-hmm. And put it together how you want. Bro, that's wild. You get to go up against, or, or not up against, but like go up. I'll show you the clip later. Yeah, please do, dude. That's fucking crazy. What do you think that was? That kind of made that flip when from your set to you talking like yourself, like them, them, them knowing, them being professionals, them being in the game for as long as they've been, them being me at one point, I guess. Mm. Does that like looking at you know young comic that ain't done it a lot, but got a, you could tell there's a little fl- there's a little something there. Let's yeah. see, let's see. And Tony's the master of that shit, and Salt Schultz too. And was it something that you took from that that you were able to carry with you the rest of your time up until now? Like a lot of the, a lot of it was <clears throat> figuring out what the fuck they meant because there was like I'm oh, just shit. they were like this is why you're funny, this is why you do you hear like Schultz I was t- talking to him after some shit like saying that you're asking me this and that and I was telling him, and then I got comfortable and was just bullshitting with him and then he cut me off and he's like stop do you, do you see how much different you sound now than when you did eight minutes ago? I was like yeah. 
I was, I was like, yeah, man, I, I was straight up, I was nervous. He's like, of course you would be, but like, this is you, this is the you, this is why you're funny. Like, this is what you need to be doing. And it's in there, you just gotta let it out. That's what he said, you get, it's in there, man, you just gotta let it out. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, I'm just trying to figure out how to do that. Yeah, right. I'm like, you know, I wanna figure out, I know it's there, I just need to figure out how to put that here. Right. And he's like, no shit, that's the yeah. whole thing, is you gotta figure that out. <laughs> And Tony's like, yeah, that, but you're doing it. You're doing it right now. So take this and do that. And that's not like a easy thing to figure out how to do. Right. But trial and error. Yeah. Figure out, okay, well, this is a real story. Talking to your friends and talking like that, getting to the point where you can talk like that in a microphone in front of people. Right. Right. You know? Do you feel like you're at that moment now? or do you feel I like think I'm still working on it, but I think so I'm crazy, way dude. better than I was. I think so I still crazy. got a lot of room to get better and grow and improve, but at the same time, I know I'm fucking leaps and bounds better than I was at that time. Yeah. You know, like, because I work and learn. Yeah. And, you know, study, watch people, look at what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Not saying do that, but... right. Like, cause I like a lot of comics and like uh, some of them, I'm like, oh, I like what they do. Maybe I can do something like that. Or, I mean, I gotta, like, I don't know how to do this. And I see somebody do it. I'm like, oh, they did it like that. Okay. Maybe I could try something like that. And there's also comics that I like that have nothing that are not like me at all. Right. Like, I'm not going to do anything like they do. That's not my flavor, but I'm a big fan because I see how they do it and it's dope. Right. Someone like who? Like. Uh, like Jesselneck. Like I love mm-hmm. Jesselneck. He's one of my favorite yeah. comics. Yeah, but me and Jesselneck got two different flavors. Oh, that's true. Jesselneck's got that fucking smart, witty, fucking dark, dark fucking swerve turn. Mm, like, yeah, right, right. I like, go, uh, yeah, yeah. I slapped this bitch in the mouth. Told her shut the fuck up. And yeah. So, so then when I'm walking her later. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's a fucking dog. <laughs> what, you know, like whatever yeah. the fucking joke. But you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like yeah, it's a spin yeah. and like you don't see it coming. Right, right. I don't do that. That's not my flavor. But it's still, I think it's hilarious. Right. I think it's dope. Yeah. I think it's awesome because he's clearly one of the best ever. It's dope to see that and mm-hmm. see how they do things. And some people are very chill. He's very chill. He's very calm, you know, confident. Yeah. Slow, stage presence. Like, even like, like the cadence slow. Yeah, yeah exactly. enunciation. Those right. kind of things. Versus some people just never stop fucking moving. Yeah. Some right. people stand still and just kind of move around a little bit. Mark Norman's hilarious. He just kind of waddles. Yeah. <laughs> he <laughs> He's waddle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where are the gays? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> the waddling back and forth. It's funny yeah. as shit. Yeah. Like, er, b- build, play into what you are. Play into yourself. Right. Like, figure out. Because, like, I like wrestling. Mm-hmm. And, like, one thing that, like, I've been trying to do is, like, be myself. Okay. How? Okay, well, like, like I like Stone Cold Steve Austin, duh. But, like, <laughs> I've watched a bunch of shit that he said. And, like, he was different characters before he was Stone Cold Steve Austin. He played different characters in the wrestling. Mm, oh, that's right, dude. He was different characters. He had and hair? He had hair at one yeah, point. He had like long-ass hair. Yeah, he had this and that, and he was different gimmicks or whatever. But then he figured out he was trying to do and He wanted to do something different. Shaved his head. And was himself, but turned, he said he always, like on all the things I've seen him talk about, he said it was himself turned up to 11. So like oh, a heightened version of himself. Uh-huh. Like it's me, but just heightened up for entertainment. Entertainment, right, right. Okay, maybe I can do that. That's how I try to figure out how to get myself there. Am I at 11 yet? No. But am I turned up more than I was? Yeah. Yeah. And I think getting more, you know, experience and trial and error and figuring out this and that and all that, like, it it comes with it and you get better and better. And I think I'm on the path to getting to that. Right. I've found some of my voice. I think there's still plenty more and more highs and lows that I can get to, you know, but I'm finding it. Mm -hmm. It ain't like... Oh, where the fuck is this bitch? Like, there's clues. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, I might not have found like the damn crumbs. bitch. Yeah, I might not have found the whole motherfucker yet, but I ain't got the big treasure chest with the million dollars in it, but I found a clue. Right. I know where to go look. I'm mm. going to keep doing that. Maybe this was a good, maybe it's in this cave. Maybe it fucking is on a whole different island. I don't fucking know. Yeah. Metaphors, but 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I'll, I'll keep hunting until I find that bitch. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where I'm at with it, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, fucking A, dude. Like, again, was hearing Bruce talk about fucking his shit, it still, still sounds like he's, however long he's been doing it, he's still trying to find it, too. I mean, a lot of people are, man. It's wild, man. Because if, if you ever think you found it, then you're going to, then what? That's true. If you ever feel like you got it and you can't do no better, then what That's the fuck so are you doing? You can always get better. That's so true. Like Drew Brees, Tom yeah. Brady, they always talk. They're two of the best, That's if not the two true. best quarterbacks ever. I fucking hate Tom Brady. I fucking yeah. love Drew Brees. <laughs> yeah. But they both say the same shit. Yeah. They both say, oh, you know, when they did good, like when they were in playing, they were like, oh, yeah, and threw four touchdowns, 400 yards, no picks. Oh, how was the game? Oh, man, it was pretty good. I mean, we had a couple bad plays here. Right. Now we got to get this cleaned up. We got to do this better. They're not talking, they're not bragging about throwing four touchdowns and 400 yards. They're not saying that's good enough. They're saying, oh, man, it was it was good, but we got to do better, man. It was like some things were good, some things we did really well, some things we got to get better at. And that's the approach you take with your stand-up. And yes, how, yeah. that's the, like, the leadership, like, the, those are the people that are great at what they do. How do I apply that kind of mentality to what I'm doing as opposed to, oh, I had a five-minute set. Yeah. Two of them jokes hit real good. I'm good. Player. Yeah, exactly. Fuck no. Exactly. Or at five minutes, oh, it, it was a damn good set. Oh, like I've had seen people have good sets, and I'm like, hey, bro, good set. And they're like, oh, man, it was, bro, it was all right. Oh, yeah, yeah right. I fucked up that one part. Yeah, right. I'm like that. Same I'm here, like, oh, dude. thanks, player. But Same like, here. I'm, Nobody knows that except them. Yeah. Because everybody else seemed to like it, but it's being meticulous. It's being yeah. or maybe that's good, maybe that's detrimental. No, I think it's great, bro. I think it, that's the only it, way I to get I think it good. can be both. I think it's, oh, okay, it depends It depends here and there on what it is. Fair. And, like, don't let your head get too big, but don't kick your own ass too hard. Mm-hmm. Like, find it that middle where it's like, yeah, this was good, this was bad. Keep doing that. Don't do that no more. Does that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's like go, go watching tape, right? It's like it, watching that's tape exactly for yourself. What it is, yeah. Watching tape, exactly. So it's. That's, that's cool, though, that you can take like football, something that you love, right? Yeah. And, a, and you enjoy doing and finding something that's helpful and bringing it into your own life. Yeah. Right? That, like, a, not a lot of people do that, honestly. I don't think. Maybe it's just because it's easier for me to understand because it's something I like and don't have to think about. I just know. Mm. Like, I enjoy it. Yeah, right? Dude, it makes it so much easier when you enjoy the shit, dude. And Literally. I enjoy comedy. I enjoy the fuck I love out of it, it. bro. And it's also a job, and it's also work, and it's also a grind, and it's also, you know. Yeah. And you you, you got to spend so much time on just that little amount of fucking stage time that you get. You know what I mean? But still, like, just one laugh out of those five minutes is fucking feels so fucking good. Yeah. You know, it's addicting. Yeah. I mean, you got to say the most but the least, you know. Right. Right. And did that come natural for you? Do you feel like saying the most, the least? Because I find that that's a, that's my struggle, bro. I feel like I overwrite shit. I think some people, oh, I think we all, it's not going to be easy. Yeah. Because it's, I'll run my mouth. Like I've probably been doing on this damn podcast for way more, <laughs> let's say way more words than I need to fucking say. Sometimes I'm just like, Phew, and that'll yeah. get the point across. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like make a noise and a shrug. That's saying the same thing yeah. without saying it. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So like, I don't, sometimes I'll run my mouth too much. Sometimes I overwrite. Yeah. Like, I think I'm like, I go on a tangent. Well, I'm you like, you just went through your some of your roast battle stuff that you're going to do tomorrow. All those seems to sing. How long were you working on those jokes? I work on them here and there. Cigarette break here. Uh, cigarette break I got you, there. Got you. Play with it. Like, okay, I got, this is a premise. This is a idea. This is what I think. They, these are a list of things I think they, so this person looks that like. I this see. is... You know, premises like where they from, what they do, what what's going on here. You know, do they are they single? Are they gay? Are they fucking in the chicks or whatever? Insert all that shit there. Okay, well they, you know, they from here, they from there. Can I write a joke about that? I don't know nothing about that fucking place. No, okay. throw that out. Can I? I can do it as a challenge. Yeah, I right, do that right, sometimes. Right. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, this is a shitty premise. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe I'll use it as a challenge and try to write something. There you go. I can write something, but they ain't gonna make. More likely not, I ain't gonna make it in there. Sometimes yeah. it might. Sometimes it might be the best fucking joke I wrote in the whole damn set. But I go with what I think is funny, and what I think the audience is gonna think it's funny. Because sometimes, especially in that roast shit, they be doing too much inside baseball. 
mm. of like, oh, this person, like, because they know each other really. It's best exactly, when you know people, yeah. and exactly. if you know somebody really good, you're like, oh yeah, like this one time in third grade, nobody gives a fuck mm-hmm. about what this one time in third grade mm-hmm. they did, unless <laughs> you know, they give a fuck what they don't know this person, they right. don't know you or this person, right? How are they gonna get teach them about show them who this person is, tell them who this person, paint this picture of who this bitch is mm-hmm. with them for five jokes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I try to do. That's why I like the comic wars because I can do all that too. I can watch them paint each other and then comment on their fucking pictures. Yeah, dude. No, you're fucking great at like just the the, the visual aspect of the comic wars, dude. Like you're Because visual is the easiest one. Because no so matter is that who where your mind goes first? Is yeah, visual? because the audience is fucking however many people and they're looking at them. They can hear them. They can listen to what they've been said. They can take Got all this you. context. That makes sense. All now. this information. I see how your mind's working. But at the end of the day, you can remember some of it. You might not remember some of what those jokes was about, you know, but they see you. And if I say you look like a, you know, fucking lesbian this or whatever, they're like, oh, fuck that. Dude. That motherfucker look just like that. Bah. You know? Yeah. Because it's simple. Right. That's what I do anyways. Oh, well, it makes sense. It's like it's it's a good gauge for the whole room to see, right? Because yeah. we don't know anything about this person, and boom, looks like we. And you do that really well too. Like I said, it's just like thanks, man. <clears throat> bringing in references of who these people look like, because we were talking about references a couple of days ago, and it's just it, it's it's so hard to like. What was it like? It's good. You want to be specific, but you also want to be general enough, general to where the audience will get it. Like you want the spec- the more specific, the better most of the time. But at the same time, don't be too deep of a specific, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, oh, you look like uh, Will Ferrell of, in this. It's like, well, oh, you look like Ricky Bobby. No, don't say I look. You look like Ricky Bobby when he said this. That's too much. Mm-hmm. But if you say, oh yeah, you look like fucking, you know what, whatever, some step bro who fucks other step bros or whatever, mm-hmm. step brothers that they were gay, whatever the fuck yeah. the zinger is, like. Specific, but not as specific, if that makes sense. No, it does. Maybe that it wasn't does. the best example, but you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like say, like you were telling me something about like Shawshank Redemption. Right. You were saying something about the- Rita the, Hayworth. The name of the chick yeah. whose post it was covering the hole. Too deep. Too deep. <laughs> yeah, like, but like if you just say like in Shawshank Redemption, like the fucking hole in the wall yeah, behind see, that there hot you go, chick. Dude, yeah. You call it a hot chick or, or the chick. Yeah. The post about with the chick on it. <laughs> Whatever. That's. Anyway. I don't know. It's because I don't have any friends from Louisiana, but everything you say, there's this twang to it. I think it's hilarious. I love it, dude. <laughs> Thanks, man. It's great, dude. That's one thing that helps you out here too. Sometimes, yeah, the twang. Yeah, well, I guess that's what you want to call it. Yeah. <laughs> um, just the way I talk, because not everybody talk like that. So exactly. They are like, where are you from? That's why I always say I'm from Louisiana because. Oh, well, then it goes into the whole thing. So I'm like, okay, I've picked up on that. Yeah. So that's why I do that in my set. Okay. Because I want them. I've had enough conversations with people I don't know to know, uh, to see at least a little bit of how those conversations end up going. They end up starting with this or that or where you from or where you from. Oh, well, where's that accent from? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm from Louisiana. Holy shit. Oh, dope. I love Louisiana. Blah, blah, blah. I've been there for this. Or my family's from there. Whatever. Wait, are you saying that you're finding, because uh, <clears throat> I was going to ask you. How like what do you talk about to let the people know who you are? It's like a conversation, I think. What you just yes. said, right? Because you want to be holy shit, bro. Because you want to have a conversation. Oh my god, bro! My mind just fucking blew up. There you go. So that's how you get them to know you. Yeah, because I treat them like people. And you're basically just. And it's a conversation with oh the audience because god. they're giving you back information. It's not just a monologue to a fucking wall. You're getting response with laugh. Or with noise or with nothing. Oh Those are all God, responses. Bro, no fucking way. Right? Conversation, dude. I treat it. The reason I got a lot better at it, like you said, like with what I was talking about with Schultz, telling me it's it, you're funny, it's in there, just keep going, you'll figure it out. I've been trying to figure out how to do that. I started just treating it like, you know, I always say like, oh, pretend it's just the audience and they draw. That ain't going to help me. What I do is I pretend that I'm sm- – when I was pretending I still do it, sometimes it's like I just pretend that I'm smoking a cigarette talking to a circle of people bro and then i'm like i'm just it's just me and a couple of people talking and then that's where i'm mo- my most comfortable dude therefore i feel more comfortable and i can do that Does that, that is the biggest gem i think i've ever had 32 fucking episodes in bro boom oh my god that's what I do. that's wild it's a, a conversation yeah 
and just like the ebbs and flows of the conversation is how you're like, if you're this talking is where to I'm somebody, from, if you're talking am. to somebody Bro, about how much crazy. you fucking love football, but they don't like football, you move on to something else. Yeah. Same thing with jokes. If you're doing a bunch of jokes about football and the audience is full of chicks and they don't like football, well, so anyways, I'm about, but uh, Taylor Swift's banging And that's how player. they get to know you. Boom. Yeah. Oh my God, Nate, this is wild. This is literally blew my mind oh, that's thanks, crazy man. I don't, I don't bro think, yeah i'm happy i could help dude, dude. i mean that's just my personal thing i mean because i was thinking about that you were saying that earlier like get having the audience get to know you and i'm like well how the fuck do you do that and that was it it's like a conversation it's like hey i'm i'm from dude i do this bro. i don't like that i don't like this i love that whatever the fucking conversation goes wherever you want it to go you get to steer it but dude that is the fucking biggest gem I've ever had on the Successful Failure podcast by Nate fucking Welch, dude. That's wild. <clears throat> Bro. Seriously. I'm happy I like, help, that's man. crazy. That's why I'm happy. You know, that's just a good thing you're doing to yeah. do this. And I'm glad I could give you something to help because that's just because my personal. The thing is that I, I heard that note like a month into comedy when people were talking about, oh, like going up to the improv and stuff like that. Like, how can the audience get to know you? And I've been trying to figure that out ever since I heard that. Yeah. And I mean, you just saying it it's a conversation was the one thing that finally got my head wrapped around Flip that. the trigger. Flip Bro, the switch. That's wild, Nate. That Thanks, is so man. simple. It's so simple. Once you figured, like, once you said it, it just, everything clicked. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I heard it from someone somewhere on a podcast before, too. One of the people I like. I'm sure it's... I'm, I'm willing to bet money one of them has said it somewhere down the road, and that's where it's at. But I know that it's even if you've heard it, it's like you got to apply it and figure mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. And the little idea of the smoking a cigarette was like, oh, okay, great, I know that's where I'm comfortable. That's my element. Mm -hmm. That's where I know I can crush. Mm -hmm. people, ever since I've been doing that, since I was, however, you know, people always like, dude, you, you, you funny, bro. You do stand up. Yeah. I'm like, no. They're like, you should try that. I'm like, maybe. Never did. Right. Until, you know, I did. Yeah. But once I figured out how to do that, at least use that as like my little thing to get me there. Right. You also know the audience is a, it is a conversation when you're doing a set. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. they are giving you responses and they're right. not giving you responses. Also a response because that's a, oh, they don't like that shit. Or, oh, they, maybe they don't, maybe you think they don't like that shit. Maybe they're just thinking. Give it a second. Figure out a way to say it quicker or funnier. Mm. Maybe that will be the thing. Or maybe that's not a fucking thing and you yeah, just need to throw right. a bitch in the yeah. trash. Anything could, it could be any of that. But it is a conversation and use it like that because it's like that's one thing you got to be able to do is have a conversation. And if you're just monologuing while the person's looking at their phone. Like, <laughs> and I've seen some comics do that, bro. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it kills me. It's presence. It's reading the room. Mm -hmm. It's, it's you know, mm -hmm. awareness, mm -hmm. social awareness. Right. Oh, these motherfuckers got some flavor of goddamn something. Yeah. And <laughs> power to you. Right. But you got to be able to understand. Look, I'm talking to this person. Pretend it's a chick. Mm -hmm. Pretend you're running game on a chick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what's working because they're engaged. If they're not engaged, they're not giving a fuck. Dude, I cannot believe you're making this so... I'm seeing it now, everything. Dude, this is crazy. I don't know why I never fucking saw it like this before. Why I needed to go fucking 32 episodes in to finally see this. Well, Fuck. Learn. Yeah. Sometimes it's 32 episodes. Sometimes it might be one episode. Sometimes it might be 432 That's episodes. That's very true. For all these different things we're talking about yeah. here. But yeah. everybody's different. You a smart dude. You you clearly want to succeed because you're doing this successful pay your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> you got, you know, you're funny, you're hungry, you're going to get there. Just mm -hmm. keep working. And yeah. I'm happy to help however I can. Bro, I you think know? you're fucking hilarious, bro. I think you're Thanks, like dude. about just bouncing off what you said with fucking Schultz and Tony, all these guys fucking saying, I think you're fucking solid, bro. Thanks, man. You were solid. Just yeah. stay with it, dude. That's you're what I've been hilarious. trying to do. And, uh, you know, I appreciate that because, you know, I want to I wanna be that. Yeah. And I'm glad I that I'm not the only one who thinks that. True. Because, but you too, and you're going to get where you want to go if you just keep working. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And, Absolutely. You know, now that I'm your boy, if I can help you however I can, I'll do that. You know, Absolutely. You just question fucking that's, just... that you didn't ask on this, holler at me. I got you. Absolutely, bro. I can tell you. I, I can either tell you, yeah, this, yeah, that, or I don't know what the fuck that is. Right. Or, I'll be honest with you. Absolutely. And that's what a homie is, right? Be, being real. Same thing. Real recognize real. Same thing yeah. with the stage. True. True. So I ain't going to hear me talking about abortion. <laughs> 
I don't fucking know. I don't fucking care. Your body, your choice, yeah. bitch. <laughs> bitch. I'll do my best to pull out so you ain't got to make a choice. How about that? <laughs> That's a real man. That's a real man. Um, off this, dude, I'm going to fucking ask you one more question. I'm going to wrap it up here. 2024. What's the main goal in 2024? What do you want to do in 2024 that's going to f- make you feel like that was a successful, that it's going to be a successful year? Hmm. I got a couple different goals. Um, one would be I want to either get like a role because I act and do voice and shit I want to get either like a fucking voice acting thing or a regular or a role on something Mm -hmm. a speaking role I want something like that for TV YouTube fucking sketch whatever okay I want to get out there more with that okay because I'm good at that and I think that I got to do a couple of those this past year. I got to do a couple of sketches with some bigger comics. They made a couple of their sketches, and they all went good. So I was like, yes, I want to do more of that. Right, okay. Same thing with, with comedy. I want to do – I want to go on the road, be somebody's opener, feature, whatever, even if it's sort of a weekend or a whole tour or whatever. I want to do that too. Oh, that's a goal. I want to do that, whether it's this person, that person, that, whoever, whatever. I want, I want to go do that. I want to go do comedy somewhere that ain't here. Got it. And get paid and get better. Yeah. That's another step I've seen. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I feel like if you and did. you give you all uh, de- dank exposure, good practice experience, learn some more shit and be on the road with somebody who's been doing it and can I can learn from them. Yeah, Ex- exactly. What dude. to do and what not to do and maybe how to handle this or not handle or, you know, stay away from that. Everything. The shit you asking me. Yeah. Absolutely, bro. And that, I like everything I said, take with a grain of salt because I don't know fuck. Oh, bro, you know. But, like I said, that note was fucking just opened my eyes to I'm a happy whole bunch of could. fucking I'm shit, happy bro. happy that I could help in any way. Dude, you know? I appreciate you, Nate. Seriously. Uh, appreciate let, you having me. Uh, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Let's let these people know where they can find you on the socials. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Nasty Nate, bro. Nasty Nate, B-R-U-H. Uh, go to Comic Wars. Follow Comic Wars. The next Comic Wars is uh, December 4th, Monday, uh, 9 p.m. at the Hollywood Improv. It's the last one of the year. After that, we do every the last Monday of every month. Come catch one of them bitches. They fun. Hell yeah, brother. Well, again, dude, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. And thank you, everyone, for listening and watching. Until next time. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you.